A properly planned laneway is allow for movement of animals among paddocks without going back through a paddock which has already been grazed. And laneway construction is very, very important, particularly for dairy cattle, because in times of wet weather, when animals are concentrated in laneways, it can get very muddy and very dirty. And properly constructed laneways are very, very important to prevent mud from getting on cattle's udders and, and also for udder health and their feet health and the prevention of mastitis. And today we're going to have Rob DeClue, the district conservationist with the uh, Soil and Water Conservation District of Shenango County. He's going to be interviewing Andy Bartlett and Andy and his wife Maureen uh, live on a farm here in Farsalia in northern Shenango County. It's a former dairy farm and it's currently being used for contract beef grazing. This laneway was built up with shale a number of years ago and uh, it helped a lot but animals will tend to make a groove and they tend to create create a berm too on the outside edges of your laneways and that traps the water in so what kind of numbers of cows were you uh, using uh, on the laneway we um, had a uh, about 140 milkers that were traveling up and down the laneways um, and then smaller groups of dry cows and heifers. Okay. As far as your laneways, uh, in terms of accommodations, I mean, your laneways, are they strictly for livestock traffic or yes. do you use them for field equipment passage? I don't like, I've never liked trying to use them for field equipment. So essentially to manage uh, your grazing acreage in terms of equipment, either your own farm equipment or say fertilizer, or lime spread, stuff like that. You have alternate approaches that, that those pieces of machinery can get to. Yeah, that's a good point, Rob. I mean, you really do need to be thinking about the fact that you are going to have to get equipment in to, at a bare minimum, clip your pastures. Mm -hmm. And you need to set your pastures up and your laneways up so that you can, at the very minimum, cut through. Like over there, there's a series of two spring gates in a row. That's how we access this system for uh, either top dressing or if we have to take surplus hay off. Or, but the but the equipment isn't traveling in it. It's more just gotta you've got to remember to think through that if equipment's going to get into the pasture, it's got to cut across laneways. So sure. you got to, you know you. You got to think that through and stuff. Today's equipment's big, so you got to leave room for it, you know, be able to get in there. So really kind of thinking through well ahead of the actual development or improvement of laneway, you know, what's going to have to cross the laneway or go down exactly. the laneway? What's the width of the equipment? Things of that come into play in terms of making sure you don't have to undo or redo. So now you've got beef animals, you know, has there been a difference in strategy and, and usage of the land? Absolutely. Lanes? Yeah, there really has been. In fact, strangely enough, I find myself grazing the place almost backwards mm -hmm. because the cows don't need to come to the barn every day. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, in the paddocks that are over there to the west, I graze them the way I used to in the first set of paddocks, and then I open a gate and graze them back this way because mm -hmm. uh, I like to just, you know, keep them moving but not not there wouldn't be any sense in in making them negotiate a series of laneways when there's no when there's no reason to as far as gates i mean i think you've touched on it a little bit but you know we get questions from farmers like well where where do i put the gates and you know how wide and stuff like that can you you know kind of share with us what your thought process and how you've basically planned and actually installed gates along your laneways? Sure, a couple basic things. Animals will concentrate in corners because they don't have any choice. I mean, here's a pinch point right here. Mm -hmm. And you kind of want to be trying to think how you're going to use the terrain. Typically, the dairy cattle would go out this way and come around that corner so if I wanted to put heifers from this backgrounding lot in with the dairy I needed an exit for them over there or if they wanted to go this way I needed an exit point over here it's very hard to take animals and encourage them to go out one way when they see the rest of their herd going another it's like pushing water uphill 
So the more you can get used to that kind of thing, the better. And in the worst case scenario, make an extra opening. I mean, you can always change your mind later and use it. If you don't need to use it, fine. But awful nice to have it there the day you need it rather than trying to build it that morning or something else. What about widths? You know, again, this is one of those uh, questions that get posed to uh, people from farmers a lot of times is, well, how wide does uh, a laneway have to be for my size operation, the type of critters that I'm working with? Do you have any insight on that? It's a great question. Um, I, I think wider is better, mm -hmm. but of course you're eating up space with a laneway the wider it is. As far as uh, the type of fence along the sides of the laneway, again, I, I see you've got in some areas, you got one strand, and other areas you got three strands and probably variations throughout the farm. I mean, any thoughts on the, the type species and- Species again, you know, mm -hmm. crucial. Um, I am a believer that to some extent, you get a visual barrier out of out of three wires or so when the animals are in a tighter spot. Mm -hmm. But really most of our fence is single wire now um, that we've done all this stuff with laneways and fenced in more more ground. As far as uh, the steepness of any of the uh, reaches of laneways, you know, have you had any problems with uh, say excessive uh, wearing or erosion or gulling or anything we've like that? We've got a spot that we tried to use the as much of the field as we could over here and it sleep slopes off sharply uh to the road mm -hmm. and what happened over time especially with the dairy cattle traffic was so intense that they actually eroded it and built up a kind of a berm of laneway material that's actually raised the outer edge of the lane so that it's now a fence about that high. We should have been a little less conscious of the amount of field we were losing to the laneway and just backed up this way a little bit. But steepness is something that I really think you really overall got to avoid, it. especially when you start talking about daily traffic of dairy animals. As far as uh, when talking about water, uh, stream crossings, I mean, any of the laneways, do they uh, cross any kind of a water course stream yeah, or whatever? Yeah, and we did a lot of work with uh, a stream crossing in this direction and a smaller stream crossing in this direction and it made a big difference I think in terms of water quality. We get high water and we had times when we couldn't move cattle over to the east because the, the creek was too high. So yeah you got to think about that you know I mean and then those are projects that you need you need help on that I mean that was earth moving and culverts and so these crossings that you're describing, the improvements you made, they're basically what we might call above grade crossings. The animals don't have to actually put their feet in the water Correct. course. Yeah, they don't touch the water. Okay. Yeah. You mentioned uh, uh, another aspect of the laneway development here in, in terms of what I call uh, water flow and basically as you improve or position the laneways, you know, trying to accommodate you know, surface water flow in such a way that it, it doesn't create headaches for you as well as the livestock. And so I think you mentioned uh, like a culvert and stuff yeah, like that. There's a there's a big culvert underneath that uh, assembly over there. It, it drains a brook that flows underneath the road and goes around through there. So we don't have a pinch point there at that water flow. The animals cross nicely there and, and move along. Now, another aspect seems to be the uh, the final surface texture that you have on the laneways. Uh, can you describe the different reaches, uh, what kind of material that you've had? You mentioned shale at the first site where we yeah, were taping. Yeah, we brought in some shale up there, um, and there's some shale underneath some of this bank run gravel that's in some of the high concentration places. Outside of a few spots on the farm, we really haven't done much with resurfacing the laneways. It's pretty much just native, the, the cattle turn it into native hard pan pretty, pretty quickly. Um, and so again, you know, you have to use your head, not trying to use the worst areas at the worst possible times and sometimes changing areas to get away from the cattle starting to show refusal to move or really slowing down. and bogging down your efficiency. So if I understand correctly, 
you know, you brought uh, in or imported uh, material on site to build up and harden those laneways in the reaches that are most intensively used. Right, right. And then further out where the traffic isn't as frequently, uh, you know, on tents and stuff right. like that, you've been able to use basically the native material on site. Right. Okay. The final uh, point that I might ask you is, uh, you know, Besides your experience, uh, what sources of information or technical assistance or uh, cost sharing opportunities have you utilized over the years to get where you are today? You know, talking to other producers, going to visiting places yeah. is, is crucial, you know. Sometimes you realize you, you know more than someone else and sometimes you really get an eye-opening experience. And kind seeing the way different people have approached things is it's in, invaluable. Kind of like finding a golden nugget of somebody else's operation that right. you can bring back home yep. and apply. Yep. Great. Well, thank you so much for sharing, you know, your experiences here and taking the time to host our little taping. Absolutely. We appreciate it. Thank no you. problem at all.